SA Crypto, South Africa's largest blockchain community and news outlet. Welcome to this edition of the SA Crypto video podcast and we're still at Blockchain Africa 2019 here in Cape Town and with me is Helgaard Avenant, originally from Cape Town, now based in San Francisco, I believe. Yes, most from, of my time. From Rehive. Welcome to SA Crypto. Thank you very much for having us. Yes. So tell us just quickly about Rehive, how you started, what it is. Awesome. So Rehive is a platform and toolkit for building fintech apps. And uh, we started, maybe if I take a few steps back with sort of where everything got started. <laughs> As students at Stellenbosch, we built a product for, that's similar to Luno, uh, just an online brokerage wallet for buying Bitcoin and spending your Bitcoin online. And this was in uh, 2015. Um, but we, we kind of realized that there's a big need for other businesses wanting to build fintech applications, but not having access to the technology or infrastructure or skills to do so. So in 2016, we started Rehive to, with a single goal. Let's see how we can make it easy for other businesses to get their products to market without having to do everything from scratch. Wow. So I believe there was... Um uh, a bit of VC funding or, or incubator funding that you got for that app. You went out to San Francisco, secured that. Tell us about that process. Yes, so in 2015, we got accepted to Boost VC, which at the time was a, uh, only a Bitcoin accelerator, focused only on Bitcoin um, companies. And that was really exciting. We got invited to go to San Francisco, uh, had a great experience there, learning about how that world works. Um, and then and yeah, at the moment, Boost VC is doing a bunch of other things too. They, they're not only focusing on crypto anymore, doing VR and all kinds of sci-fi and exciting things, but they're very open for international founders, which made it an easy process for us to get there. And then once you're in the US, things are pretty easy. We'd be able to incorporate a, a company in less than three days. Wow. Um, as a South African citizen, was that actually not a difficult uh, process? It was not in the end. Wow. Things changed, I believe, recently a little bit more in terms of getting bank accounts and so okay. forth. But you're allowed to get registered a business there. There are other complications that comes in along the way that you have to navigate and figure out. But uh, yeah, you can register a business. They don't prevent you from doing that. And then once, once you're in the US, these accelerators are exceptionally good at attracting uh, angel investors. And, uh, and venture funds too, but typically at that stage, you're, you're better off spending your time meeting with angel investors, founders that's previously made, made it. And so, yeah, we got access to their network. Uh, at the time, Bitcoin was, uh, the, the Bitcoin, there was a primarily a Bitcoin focus in the Valley. And so joining the Bitcoin meetups made it really easy to, to get access to some of the thought leaders in the industry. And eventually, when we started, when we pivoted to Rehive um, in 2016, we were able to tap back into that network and got some backing from really great investors, including Jed McCaleb, that's the founder of uh, Stellar, and Jesse Powell, that's the CEO and founder of Kraken, and Tim Draper, that's like a notoriously known as like the, the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin VC. Um, and making these uh, crazy predictions. And all these investors has really been uh, playing a big part in backing our vision of, of helping um, accelerate fintech innovation. And that being the stepping stone sort of to transition to an open financial system by building tools and infrastructure. So people don't have to start from scratch, particularly in the markets that we are then operating in. So what was the reason for the pivot? You know, you, you started with a wallet and then went into sort of white labeled development for the fintech industry what caused that pivot and it seems like that happened before the big speculative price bubble of bitcoin happened yeah tell us about the reason yeah for that. so in 2015 there was a bit of a price dip so it was hard to get venture backing for a brokerage type product like luno as particularly as first-time founders and um, the, a couple of the funds already kind of made their bets, either bet, made a bet on Luna or on Coinbase or on a couple of these now established uh, uh, exchanges and wallet providers. Um, so it was hard, it was hard to, get, to get venture funding at the time. But in the, the process, the thing that kind of made us change our mind is realizing in our journey of building fintech apps and, and getting excited about the mission behind Bitcoin and, and, and being 
and thinking about what innovative kind of products can we bring to market uh, where it now all of a sudden it's easy to program on a store of value uh, where previously that was not possible <coughs> even just as students we could yeah. do that uh, what, what was exciting about that is uh, we had all these cool ideas of fintech products we could build uh, that previously banks might have not been pushing so hard and so we thought what if we could and so that creative spark made us think what if we could just build the minimum things people would need so that we can bring these exciting products to life and that was more exciting to us than just building just building the wallet and so kind of that that's when the the the, the rehive was born was it a big pivot was it a lot of change or was it just it, hey guys you know you got a, a smallish team hey guys this is where we're going and uh let's do it i think at that time it was it was basically the the third or fourth iteration of product or business models that we've tried. Previously, we've done like Bitcoin, Bitcoin voucher solution while students, and then this uh, online wallet, and Rehab's basically the third. It wasn't, I think it came kind of naturally, because by the time, by that time, we already had a pretty solid infrastructure, and we could, we were looking at what are the things we could do as a consumer product, but then kind of took a step, few steps back, what if we could make it in a way, we built Rei for ourselves. Wow. Um, okay. Uh, if if you, if you think about it sure. like that way, it's, like they say in the in the startup space, scratch scratch your own itch in a way. Yes. Yeah. I guess. And so yeah. So that's um, that's that's been that's yeah. So I think it kind of just happened naturally. And uh, one thing that stood out for me in the journey so far is there's something about having conviction in what you want to achieve. The uh, because you really need that conviction and drive to be able to recruit a team. Uh, you depend on your team and you need to be able to inspire them in some way or another and um, you need to be able to push through the hard times. And so I think the, the REIP model and the, the original vision we were, we were going after is still there. Uh, how can we really help people build fintech apps without doing things from scratch? And um, yeah, so I think that spark of hey, we could we could really do this, made made it sort of more of a natural pivot. So you've got quite a big team. If someone goes to your website, they they go to rehive rehive.com, is it? Yes, Rehab. rehive.com. That's a pretty impressive domain, by yes. the way. Rehive.com. Someone goes to your website, which I did uh, just in preparation for the interview. I saw all the uh, team. It's a fair sized team. I mean, you know, you look at that. You've presented yourself so well, this is a solid company. You know, you can see you've been around for a while, you've got funding, you're doing well. Um, I believe most of that team is South African. Yes. Now, where are they based? Because you told me you're now based primarily in San Francisco. Yes. Where are your team based? So, Riyadh is uh, mostly remote. Everyone is remote. Okay, we so don't distribu have a, a distributed team. Just a distributed team. team. Yes. We're across different time zones. We have some team members in, in South Africa, in Cape Town, team member in Durban, Amsterdam, Canada, myself in San Francisco, and then we have a team member now also in Thailand, um, and uh, and in in Bangladesh. I believe. Wow! But the team moves and, around, and this is a full-time team hired by yes. Rehive. We're not talking freelancers. Yes, you have it's hired developers. Yes, it's very important for us to make sure that the team is fully on board with the mission, and so uh, and with a distributed team. It's very hard to keep things focused if you're not in the same space. We yep. have to build in all kinds of mechanism to make sure we are on the same page and in sync and across time zones it gets complicated. Mm. So we, we had to learn a bunch of things in that regard. But um, uh, there's a lot of upside also being in different time zones and particularly with our business being a B2B product. Um, it helps being in some other markets and having access to those markets by having sure. someone there and having been able to build relationships because it's kind of a key part in, in moving forward and, and getting a customer onboarded on the platform. Wow. Um, and just take us through your, your big announcement today. So Rehive is, has launched a, a, a new offering um, and you are now onboarding clients for this offering. Take us through that. Yes, yeah, so we're very excited about um, uh, what we are announcing today, which is it's, it's more of a, it's a white label product for um, launching your own branded uh, crypto wallet where previously we only focused on helping customers build on top of our APIs. And they had to do that last mile themselves building the client-facing application. 
And not only do we now do the end-to-end -end mobile wallet with support for cryptocurrencies, including Stellar, Ethereum, and Bitcoin, but also offer a couple of powerful extensions on top of that. Um, and these extensions help you do mass payments to email addresses or mobile numbers. Um, you can configure reward campaigns for when a user signs up or make his first transaction or refers a friend. And we also have a built-in marketplace where you can list some lightweight products to kind of close the loop of the, uh, launching a business case, a viable business case to your existing customers. So imagine you're, as a, as a business case, what you can do with this white label template. The first one we are announcing today is imagine you need to do mass payouts of some sort. It can be for, it can be for rebates, it can be for an insurance claim, it can be for a casino doing payouts to, um, uh, to um, casino winners. Clients, yeah. Yeah, and then having being able to let that, uh, have the option for your user to let the funds go into a wallet which is branded with your brand and then being able to let those customers shop at partner stores which you have arrangements with or being able to purchase goods inside the app and sort of being able to build a revenue generating, um, a, a, take a revenue generating product to market without having to do any coding. And this is only the first template. So in the course of the next few months, we'll be introducing a couple of other exciting templates that uh, businesses can then launch and see how it could work or fit into their existing customer base as a, as a value added offering. So yeah, we're very excited about that. And if you, as just a sort of as an analogy that can help you sort of see where it fits in. So if you think about uh, Shopify it makes it easy for you to launch uh, e-commerce stores. Uh, where you don't have to do everything from scratch. In the same way, uh, Rehive is making it easy for you to build and launch uh, fintech applications where you don't have to then code everything yourself. Uh, yeah, and we're looking very, for, and if, if you're interested to learn more, you can go to the website. We have a option where you can get in contact with us. If you have any requests on fintech applications where you think we could help you go that extra mile offering or configuring a template on the platform, um, we'd love to hear that and see how we can help. So you're servicing clients around the world, eh? Yes, at the moment we, yeah, our clients wow. are from different places. Uh, how old are you? Do you mind me asking? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I don't mind saying, I guess. <laughs> I am now 29. 29, yes. okay, so before your 30s, you've got VC funding from San Francisco, based in San Francisco, got a remote team and developing white labeled products now Fair. in the FinTech space. That's very impressive. I guess well it done. seems like that, yes. Well, well but done. it's all thanks to the teams and thank you very much. Yeah, congratulations. We wish you all the best. How can people get in touch with you direct? Are you on LinkedIn, Twitter? My name is hard to spell, but you can definitely find me on Twitter. Okay. So Hellhart, you can also find me on our website. Um, yeah, and our, our team members are pretty easy to reach. Just uh, send us an email to our first name at rehive.com. Brilliant. So first name basis at rehive.com. Go check it out and go check out rehive.com. They are doing incredible work in the space. And uh, hey, I'm even considering, I'm not going to lie, we even spoke about it off camera, uh, the potential of an SA crypto wallet, but yes. uh, price point is important. So you need to talk to Elkhart about your affordability. You do offer a gray label uh, option as well, I believe. Yes. Eh? So it's something we're still experimenting with. because it seems So the strange. white label package is uh, deliverable. Yes. As it stands, it's a, pro it's a product ready to take yes. right now. But the gray label is sort of still... The, the gray label is the option where you don't have to kind of maintain your own any of your own branding um, in an application in the app store because that extra steps makes it brings a bit of extra cost but the gray label option is where imagine like how slack works yeah you can create a slack organization and you can invite people to your organization so rehive's gray label wallet would work essentially the same way you can create a rehive organization and invite uh, people to that organization and you can build your community inside your organization and um, yeah, that's quite exciting. It's a strange yeah. concept, but we think there might be something there. Well, certainly from a price point yes. point of view, it might be more palatable for, for smaller startups, yes. you know, bootstrap startups. And the other thing we're excited about that option is that you can, um, you might be able to get, acquire customers also easier from other channels, uh, particularly if you list your, your project as an open organization which is quite, it's quite interesting. And just finally in wrapping up, uh, Helghart, what, what advice would you give people developing in this space right now, entrepreneurs in the blockchain industry, specifically in South Africa, because that's a lot of our audience, what would you say to them? Yeah, so if you're in, in South Africa and you have an ambitious idea, 
there are definitely people outside of South Africa that would be interested in backing that idea, even if it's a South African based idea. There's a strong trend towards backing South African entrepreneurs where you don't have to necessarily incorporate a US business anymore. In 2015, it was a prerequisite. That's kind of started changing, which is good news. But if, um, but if you're planning on primarily uh, operating in South Africa and don't feel like you want to relocate for a period of time to uh, expand your network, it's important that you choose a business model that's really sound and solid. And uh, my advice would be, if it's something in fintech, it's, it's, it's worthwhile exploring strong distrib- partnerships with j- distribution channels. South Africa has primarily got a, a, like a, 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 market, a low income market that's widely spread, hard to access those customers. Um, and beginning when I started out as sort of doing stuff in fintech, I didn't realize the power of, for example, retail distribution networks in helping you get your products out there. And there are definitely retailers that are open to interesting innovations in financial products where you would assume speak to banks. And so I think that that's a little tip that, mm. that I think um, you could, uh, you could that, that I would have liked to have heard sooner. The, the other thing is we host a couple of, last year we hosted a couple of hackathons in, in Cape Town and in Johannesburg. And um, if you're a, someone that's a developer, that's a great place to come and meet other developers and, and learn from each other. And it's also, if, you, if you're a developer that are interested in joining a startup, particularly in the crypto, blockchain, fintech space, it's a great place to meet entrepreneurs that you could potentially work with. Because uh, these uh, hackathons tend to also attract so the creative-minded person that have uh, some exciting project that they want to work on, but don't have a sort of technical co-founder or someone that could join them. Yeah, and then the last piece of advice is something I learned in 2013, 2012 maybe even. It was fortunate enough to, to at the time, as a student, meet um, Chris Becker. And we didn't chat much, but he said one thing, and that is, whatever you do, if you're creative and you jump around between ideas, make sure you try stick to an industry. Because the comp- compounded effect of staying in an industry, making friends, starting to understand the industry is uh, sort of irreversible. And like, or the compounded effect really helps you p- reposition yourself and keep playing the game. Mm. That so, is I think a that whole whack of advice listed right there. We may even cut that clip perfectly for, for uh, another entrepreneurs. <laughs> that was great. Okay, Thanks, thank man. you for your time. Good luck. That was, and was uh, we wish Thanks, you all the James. best. Yes. Thank you. That's it for this edition of the SA Crypto Podcast. Get in touch with Halkhart. Check out Rehive.com and we'll see you on the next edition. Cheers. SA Crypto, South Africa's largest blockchain community and news outlet.